Alright, I thought I would do a video about my book collection. Um, this is just part of it. I'll get to the rest later. Actually, the books that I have right now are maybe, I'd say 15 to 20 percent of all the books I've ever owned. I've uh, lent away a lot and never gotten them back. I've also given away a lot and uh, at one point, maybe six years ago, I was uh, in a financial situation where I was really desperate and I sold about half of my book collection. Um, but anyway, so starting up here, let's see, The Arab Mind. This is a brand new one that I got. Um, this was recommended by uh, the person who did an ARI lecture called uh, The Psychoepistemology of the Arab World. That's an excellent, excellent uh, lecture if you ever want to get a hold of it. And The Arab Mind featured prominently in this. And here is The World's Major Languages. This has been on my Amazon wish list for almost eight years now. I, I wanted it when I was a linguistics major in college, but it's, it's a $40 book. It's really thick. And it's, it has an in-depth uh, uh, exposition on all sorts of important languages. Um, it's, it's kind of technical. I mean, it helps to have done some upper-level linguistics courses, but uh, it was a $40 book, and uh, I saw on Amazon.com it was reduced down to nine bucks, so uh, eight-year wait, but it was worth it. So uh, let's see. Psychology of Romantic Love by Nathaniel Brandon, What Love Asks of Us. Blank Slate, I have not read this. Um, it's been on my to-read list for quite a while, maybe a year now. Life at the Bottom is one of the best books I've ever read. Theodore Dalrymple is a, uh, uh, or he was a physician at a, uh, a Britain slum hospital, and um, he talks about how the ideas of the intelligentsia have it basically infected the lower classes into uh, believing that uh, there is no higher or lower, so why not just stay where we are? Because you know what I what val is a value to me is a value is just as good as a value that's harder to reach so why not just stay where I'm at um, it's absolutely brilliant um, if I had to pick my top five books this would absolutely be in there let's see Ayn Rand lexicon extraordinarily helpful I love that book uh, Black ne Rednecks and White Liberals I got a bunch of these books in uh, at once I've been a uh, financially strapped again, so I had a, a build-up of books I wanted to get. So Black, Rednecks, and White Liberals. Philosophy for Dummies, I just had to see what was in this book. I have no... Okay, I flipped through it a bit, and it it seems pretty much what you would expect. It's superficial, and oh, this is what they think, and that's what they think, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it was, it was 13 bucks, so might as well find out what people are saying that, you know, dummies in philosophy need to know. Let's see. Practical English usage. This is basically for um, uh, non-native speakers, actually. I got this when I was uh, tutoring English as a second language. Um, my great big copy of Atlas Shrugged. Um, I got that one when I was planning to uh, write a book about Atlas Shrugged. Um, I was thinking of uh, talking about all the intricacies and the layers of meaning and uh, everything else that's in Atlas Shrugged to to kind of counter the people who say that Ayn Rand is just a you know just a, a silly little pot boiler with no literary merit. Let's see. I, well, I obviously can't do this line by line thing for all of my books. I'll be here all day. So let's see. Uh, One Nation Under Therapy, Theory of Moral Sentiments. That's by Adam Smith. Uh, Let's see, he, I think he was primarily a uh, moral philosopher, um, if what I remember correctly is true. So, got to get cracking on that one. Objective is epistemology, economics in one lesson. Let's see, in pursuit of happiness. Let's see, the end of faith. Oh, these. What's neat about this copy is I won a Sam Harris writing contest. And part of my prize was a $100 check and a signed copy of The End of Faith. I haven't read this copy, but it's not really for reading anyway. Great job, Jennifer. All the best, Sam Harris. Yeehaw. All right, and a couple books on Jefferson that I got when a friend of the family died. I actually uh, never had any plans of reading that, uh, but, you know, I was the book collector in the family, so I'm the one who ended up with them. Let's see, Les Miserables, another thing that I never uh, never quite read. I. It's really hard for me to get into fiction, so maybe someday. 
and a few small books by Eric Hoffer. Um, he's another really good author. I did a video on some of his quotes once. Alright, let's see. God Delusion. Uh, Incorrect Thoughts by John Leo. Actually, this one is signed as well, if I'm, if memory serves. Yes. Yeah, he uh, retired a couple years ago, and I sent him an email uh, telling him basically that I had been reading his uh, columns since I was like 13 or 14 years old. So uh, he sent me a book. Let's see, what does it say? Read all these immediately. Every word guaranteed true. Best John Leo. All right, let's see. Scientific irrationalism. This is kind of like a counter to uh, to a Thomas Kuhn and Eric and a uh, uh, Karl Popper and those kinds of people. Uh, I think this guy is a um, uh, uh, Australian, and um, I got this for um, the purpose of writing my book on postmodernism. And uh, there was a great quote actually in Queen Nelson's book. Uh, some it, it was along the lines of. You know, Australia is uh, isolated geographically, so it's a natural home for uh, uh, marsupials and philosophical uh, renegades, something like that. So let's see, let's see what else. Ah, oh, Will to Power. This, this book, this is actually the uh, the original uh, inspiration for my book on postmodernism. I, I was originally going to uh, make a book on nihilism, but it. As I started thinking about it more, um, it, I realized that nihilism is not... It occurred to me that nihilism was a major problem. I mean, it, the, the whole idea that there is no objective uh, standard of value, there's no objective good, no objective bad. Um, and it occurred to me that that was a, a really serious problem that needed to be addressed. And as I thought about it more, I realized that nihilism didn't stand alone. It, it was interlocking with all these other anti-reality ideas. Um, for example, uh, nihilism comes from, uh, basically from relativism. I mean, if what I value is no better or worse than what a psychopathic killer values, then there is no value. I mean, if as long as um, good is uh, totally subjective, then there is really no good. Um, it has no definition in that case. Um, so anyways, some of the very beginning of the will to power, I've got it just marked all to hell. It's very, very good. And a lot of, a lot of this book actually is kind of obtuse and not really worth reading, but a lot of it is very, very good. Like, it'll knock your socks off. All right, let's see. Hard America, Soft America try and go a little bit faster, find all the good stuff. Let's see, Fashionable Nonsense, that's another, that's another good one. If you've heard of the Sokol hoax, uh, about ten years ago, um, Alan Sokol and Jean Bricmont, uh, the people who wrote this book, um, uh, made a complete nonsense, uh, uh, postmodernism jargon laden uh, uh, essay, and they, uh, they submitted it to a, 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 a journal. And the journal accepted it and made it their their cover story for the for the month or the quarter or whatever it was. And then they they uh, they came out and they said, "Oh, this this was complete nonsense. We made this up. It doesn't mean anything." So anyway, that's about them. And uh, let's see, Mind in the Brain. That's actually not that great of a book. I mean, it it has some good pages, but it wasn't quite worth it. Losing Faith in Faith was one of my first um, really philosophical books. Um, I read it. Uh, when I was 19, at the end of my freshman year of college, and uh, let's see, not not much else to say about it except that it it was really formative for me at the time. It was it really made a lot of things about atheism clear for me. Uh, so that's a that has a special place in my history.